upper room? No, you're staying here. Okay. All of you who are staying here, they as attendees can go into, there, there's going to be two um, sessions. This is the first one from 6.15 to 6.50. And then the second breakout session is from 6.55 to 7.30. They have over nine industries that they can enter and learn more about. Um, and they decided to join ours. Make sense? Yes. Okay. I think. Paula, are we here for both sessions or do we do ours and then? Uh, you're here for both sessions. Okay, thank you. And if there's any other questions, feel free to personal, personal or direct message me on the Zoom. Okay. Hello, all. Welcome. We're going to be allowing a couple of minutes for others to transition and enter our breakout session. We'll get started shortly. Are these mostly high schoolers? Um, if you can let us know <laughs> uh, if you're an adult, uh, like an adult school student, a high school student, a parent, just trying to get information, feel free to let us know in the chat. And if you're able to, for those that have unknown um, on your name, if you hover over your, your little box, maybe you don't even know which one is yours, um, or in the participants, if you click on the three little dots, you could rename yourself um, to your preferred name, if possible. Thank you. So if you can let us know in the chat, maybe where, where are you joining us from? Are you a high school student? Are you a current college student still trying to see what programs are out there? Are you from industry? Um, let us know in the chat. We will, we will be getting started. So hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining our industry session. I am Paula Barrera Partida. I am today's moderator. Um, and I am here to um, showcase all the types of programs and careers that are available for the Inland Empire Desert Community Colleges, which include Barstow College, College of the Desert, Chafee College, Copper Mountain College, Crafton Hills College, Moreno Valley College, Mount San Jacinto College, Norco College, Palo Verde College, Riverside City College, and San Bernardino Valley College, and Victor Valley College. Um, after the completing our session today, you will have the opportunity to explore another industry session. To reach these sessions, please visit the feed loop sessions and click on your industry of interest. Um, and also please note that this session is being recorded so it will be shared with those who are not able to make it. We will also be emailing the, these industry sector recordings to those who have attended with our resources and how to get connected with our 12 community colleges by Friday. Uh, now let's get, let's get down to business. For this session, we have several panelists. Um, you will see them pin, pinned to your um, screen, hopefully. Um, from our colleges represent, representing the 
this is going to be a long industry title. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, from moving forward, it's just going to be for as this industry, uh, industry, energy construction, utilities, engineering, and manufacturing industry session. We will be asking our faculty members um, some questions. So if you have any questions about this industry or these industries, um, they are representing or their programs, please raise your hand in the Zoom or enter the question in the chat and we will pose these questions to our panelists. Um, but to get started, we're going to have our panelists introduce themselves. And panelists, may you please share your name, your title, your college, and something that gets you excited about this industry. Mm. And we will start with, um, yes, go ahead. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start. Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Laura Alvarado. I'm from Chafee College and the Intech Center. I think what gets me excited is that all of the access and opportunities that students have, regardless of what community college you choose to go to, but to know uh, that there's so many different programs here that can meet your needs. That's what gets me excited about the industry now. Irene? Uh, good evening. My name is Irene Gishfuller, and I am the manager of student experience and learning at JP College Index Center. And I am excited about um, the opportunities out there uh, in involving short term accelerated programs and uh, the opportunities that are there once a student completes successfully at JP College. Thank you. Steven? Hey, my name's Steve. Um, I'm the department chair of engineering at Mount San Jacinto College. And uh, what really gets me excited about engineering is the ability to create new stuff. And especially here in the Inland Empire, there is a lot of manufacturing, design, building, and testing all over the place. Like, even if you just like drive down to Mecula, I bet you don't even know, right down Jefferson, there's a rocket testing facility. So that's what gets me excited is knowing that all this opportunity is there and there's really cool stuff for our students to do. Really cool. Uh, Gil? Uh, my name is Gil Vila. I'm with Norco College, Electrical and Automation. Um, and what gets me excited is I teach you how to make money using your hands. <laughs> it's a technical job. This is what I did, uh, what I retired with. And it's a lot of fun and there's no formulas and uh, making money with your hands is very powerful. Thank Kafir. Hello, my name is Kafir Mendelovitz. I am from Riverside City College. I am in charge of the HVAC department. Uh, we have an accelerated program as well where you can come in, be a day student, uh, get in and out within a year or you can be a night student, get in and out within a year. Uh, we have, with the electrifications of California, we're in the process of changing about 34 million new air conditionings um, in the next five to 10 years. So this is a great opportunity to come in and start a great career. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work and a lot of money to be made. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure we all like money. <laughs> thank you all so much. Thank you all for being here. Um, and thank you for those who are who joined us in the middle of all that. Um, now we're going to get started on our discussion. I have a couple of questions for our panelists today. And in the same order, we will go with this for after this question. What can you tell us about the energy construction and utilities, particular, particularly for engineering and manufacturing industry? Irene, why don't you take this one um, for Chafee? Perfect. So as far as uh, industry goes, um, in the um, industrial electrical and mechanical uh, technician uh, field, there are uh, many opportunities since it's been uh, an, an essential, <clears throat> essential job uh, since the pandemic. So uh, with our short-term accelerated program in about three and a half months, you gain experience and skills in the uh, mechanical and electrical 
field as well as the automation. And there's um, in the Inland Empire region, there's 14,096 annual job openings. And um, annually within the year, it's 1,457 at the average starting wage rate of $25 an hour. And Stephen? Yeah, so the engineering manufacturing sectors in, in the Inland Empire are kind of, kind of very robust. Um, one thing I hear all the time is, California, we don't make anything anymore. Actually, Southern California is the manufacturing center of the United States. We have more manufacturing here per capita than any other census area in the country. Um, I've worked in factories my whole life, uh, right up until I entered into education. So prior to this, I worked in defense. Before that, I worked in robotics automation. And then before that, I worked in um, fluid flow automation equipment. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here. In addition to that, MSJC also, our engineering program offers a logistics program, which is part of systems engineering. And um, the industry here for industrial engineering, systems engineering, and logistics is huge because of our proximity to the ports of LA and the ports of Long Beach. This is kind of like the distribution hub for the rest of the country. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And what's really cool is we have a program that um, trains people up how to be engineering technicians, which is kind of like the sidekick to the engineer in one year. Um, and we also have an engineering transfer uh, pathway program as people decide they want to go get their bachelor's degree. We also have a drafting program, which is pretty huge down here right now. So we have, uh, we're, we're pretty excited by everything we see. And I think there's a lot of really cool um, industries here. We have defense right here. We have medical devices right here. And we also have automotive right here. So it's kind of, it's kind of fantastic. Really cool. Gil? Yes. Uh, so all this we're talking about, the automation, electric, uh, like in Norco College and some of our other colleges have uh, are California certified to uh, help you become an electrician. And joining that with automation just gives you the tools that you can work in any industry. Uh, at Norco College, we are... Uh, Again, shortening our program so that in three courses, uh, you can get certified and kind of test the waters and see if you like it. We have all of our colleges have a lot of toys that come play with. Uh, even the professors at UCR come down and they just salivate because they want they want toys because their engineers, they don't know, they, they don't teach them how to use their hands. They teach them how to do research mm -hmm. and they've come down to our, our schools. And uh, so we have all the toys. Um, we have, and the key point here on all of our courses is, is uh, the combination of electrical, mechanical, and uh, pneumatics and hydraulics. And we all teach it um, a little bit different, but it's all the same. And again, you can take these skills anywhere. You're, you won't be stuck in one area. Kafir? Absolutely. So once again, like I was talking about the energy set spectrum of what California is trying to do, it's not just California, it's the rest of the country going in that route as well. So we want to be able to use, to use less power in the, in the long run, right? And take some of the, the drain off of uh, the grid. And so we're electrifying everything and using less energy. Our machines that we are putting together, the way that we connect them, the way that we run them, the heat pumps that we can pull air, even though it's freezing outside, we can pull hot air out of that air, right? And heat up your house and vice versa with reversing valves. Um, so different construction, different energy pathways, um, the way it is manufactured strictly for California and then the rest of the country uh, when it comes to HVAC or even water heaters, right? We teach water heaters because now plumbers can only install them, but they're not allowed to, to touch them because they have refrigerant in them. Um, these are all brand new things that are coming out to the industry 
And we are trying to save energy in every possible aspect of everything that we do. So the, the, the future is starting to look bright. Absolutely. Very cool. Now, now that you've all shared about this, what kind of programs are available and how long are those programs? Laura or Irene? <laughs> I'll start. I'll go ahead and share a little bit. So we offer, um, we actually have three different programs right now at Chiefy. So uh, from our pre-apprenticeship, this would be really our entry-level students, students that are unemployed or underemployed. We have a pre-apprenticeship pre -apprenticeship in um, automation, robotics, and mechatronics. And we also have one in industrial electrical and uh, maintenance. So our programs run about three and a half to four months, as Irene had said, that's on a full-time basis, but we do uh, offer evening on part-time as well. This coming fall, we're actually, um, so our programs are what we call not for credit. So you leave with the education, the training and a certificate um, and certifications, but they don't earn college credit. So these are industries that um, it's really those certifications that are gonna move you forward. However, we are blending our automation, robotics and mechatronics with our credit department starting this fall. So we're offering an accelerated Chiefy College mechatronics level one certificate that a student would earn all of, uh, would take all seven courses and earn the full certificate in one semester. Embedded in the program are career services. And at the end, we work with those students on job placement. And as Irene had said, many of these programs move right into about $25 an hour. So within one college semester, you could, you could move from unemployed right into a very well-paying job in an industry that you're, you are highly needed. Irene, did you want to add on to that anything? You're on mute. <laughs> so we do incorporate as part of our training is theory and then also our, our hands-on lab portion of the training in the mechanical side, the electrical and the automation piece. Steven? That program sounds really cool. I wish my community college had it. <laughs> I, I ended up specializing in mechatronics after I transferred. That would have been fantastic. Um, so MSJC, we have a bunch of different programs. We have a drafting associate's degree. That's a two-year degree, um, gets you a degree as a drafter, prepares you for that job. We also offer a certificate of achievement for people who just want to get a certificate and go draft. Um, we that That's a 15-unit certificate, so you can knock that out in, the, in one semester, uh, two semesters. We offer a... Um, Bunch of new logistics certificates, uh, which are logistics leadership, logistics analysis. Um, we offer a uh, certificate in um, logistics entrepreneurship, which teaches you how to set up your own pick pack and ship business. Um, we also have our engineering technician support program, which is a uh, 15 unit certificate that basically teaches you kind of gives you an overview of everything in engineering and prepares you to go be an engineering technician. Um, so that's that one's pretty cool. And then we also have our engineering transfer program, uh, which prepares people who want to transfer to a four-year institution. So we are adding a whole bunch of new transfer courses to that that'll be online, not this school year, but next school year. So if you start this school year, they'll be ready for your sophomore year. Hill. Uh, Gil Vela again, Norco College. I put uh, my phone number. My you can text me uh, if you want more information. Uh, I mean, this is really exciting. Everybody, everybody, just all these colleges around here uh, have a lot of programs for you to choose from. Now, specifically me at Norco, I hear your students. Uh, a lot of students are working. You're working full time. Uh, it's hard to go to school and get that education quickly. So we have uh, the normal courses, uh, electric, electrician courses that can take 
a year and a half to two years. But if you don't want to hear that, you just want one course and get a certificate, we also have that. We can get you MSSC certified in automation. And that is a nationwide certification with one course. Now, there's a total of three certifications that uh, goes along with that. So if you like it and you uh, want to advance to the second one, which is more troubleshooting and have lots of fun, again, that second course, uh, which is SCA 10, um, is offered every semester. So one course, one certificate, get a taste of it and see if you like it. And it's offered in the evening and uh, and in the uh, at night also. So you have your 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 pick and your choices. So if you want more information, you have my number in the uh, chat room. Up here. Right. So we have at the moment we have four different certificates. Uh, we have a fifth one coming. It's going to be the industrial refrigeration, but. Every single one of our certificate stacks. So if you took the smallest certificate, which is four classes, you can be done within one semester, you'll get your certificate. Those four classes are gonna move on into the residential certificate. You take that, that is an associate degree or a certificate, your choice. You can knock that out within nine months. If you wanna go into the commercial refrigeration, you're going to take the same certificates, the same classes that you took for the residential, plus three more classes, and now you have your commercial certificate, and that is also an associate degree. Once you pass that and you want to sit on the beach and control different air conditioning systems around the world, you can with our building automations and our control classes. So we teach you how to do IP addresses, every part gets IP addresses, you learn pneumatics, uh, DDS, all different types of uh, different controls. And that's another certificate all on its own. And then hopefully sooner than later, we are gonna be uh, the first college to have both CO2 and ammonia on campus. So we'll be able to do industrial refrigeration here at Riverside City College. And once and again, in every one of those stacks. So if you've taken the small certificates, the same classes that move into the residential, that move into the commercial, industrial, so on and so forth. And if you're like me taking notes and trying to get all this information, don't panic. We are recording this session. And after this session, after both of those sessions, um, at the end of this week, we'll be, be, we will be sending these recordings along with the resources that are being shared like our programs. And then Tyler, I did see your question and we I do have a question for the panelists that are gonna touch on that. So we, thank you for putting in the chat, we'll get on it. <laughs> um, the next question, what is the pay salary of, the, of some of those careers that you all mentioned? Dr. Alvarado or Irene? So starting salaries are in the $25 range and the earning trajectory goes up fairly quickly in the industry. Um, <clears throat> it seems like, uh, for example, I, I just had a student last week call me and tell me that <clears throat> he was excited. He, he tested and was promoted to a maintenance tech two position and he graduated last August in, of 2022 and is currently making 4150 an hour. So um, it was pretty phenomenal. And that's not, um, that's exciting for somebody who's, um, a, he was, a, he is a single dad of three kids. So I was very, very grateful for the opportunity that Intech had. Uh, that short-term accelerated program has been worked out really well for him. If I can jump on, we also have another student. She, uh, was also a single mom of several kids, did our four-month apprenticeship program, and she's now a supervisor at JPL and was and became a supervisor, what, probably within a year or so? Mm -hmm. About a year. Um, and she started working during the pandemic. So, I mean, that just gives, it shows you how, with everything stopping at that point, that she was able still to go in, get a job and, and work her way up. So um, just to highlight, these fields aren't just for men. 
So we've got our we've got our strong women showing in our programs as well. <laughs> and Steve. So drafters can expect a salary between like 20 and 30 bucks an hour. Um, usually uh, engineering technicians, um, it's quite variable. Um, I've seen starting at like the $20 range, but I also know an engineering technician who works for um, government contractor and he makes 75,000 a year salary. So it, it's very variable and it's based a lot on experience. But what the certificate does is it helps you get that first job so you can get that experience and move up. Um, the engineers, if you transfer and become an engineer, then you know you're six figures. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to I don't want to talk about what my salary, well, how much salary I gave up to take this job, but it was painful. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the logistics side, what we're seeing is uh, students with no certificate or getting hired at Amazon at the lower end, which is like 15 to 1750. And then the ones who get the certificate get in on the higher end, which is 20 to 25. Okay. Yes, so yeah, we talked about Amazon. Uh, my students in uh, my certification class uh, are work at Amazon, they work at Target, um, they work at, uh, and, and they're there to get that, that edge to become a tech two, what they call a tech two and tech three positions. Um, the, I always tell the students, don't, don't think about what you're gonna start at, think about what the ceiling is. And then as you get started, you plan, you get your two to five year plan to break that ceiling. And all these programs, if you look ahead, five years ahead, uh, every time you hit the ceiling, you can, you, you want more money, uh, all our schools will teach you how to get more money, get into management, get into other fields. Uh, and just quickly, if to, uh, all of us have, uh, many of us have the electrician program. Think about what an electrician is going to charge you to come out to your house and fix something electrical. There's your salary. You think they're, they're going to charge you $60 to come out to your house, maybe $100, maybe $120. Maybe that call is going to cost you over $220. Okay, that one electric, uh, one electric electrician call. Think about that end of it and going out on your own once you get established as a technician. So really, um, the the sky's the limit, and um, the, and also open up yourself geographically. And there's the the world is getting smaller, and if you're able to move, there are a lot of opportunities all over. Um, just Think outside California. Kefir. Okay, so let's start with this pay. So if you just do the installation certificate, which is the four classes, you're looking to probably make anywhere from 18 to $24 an hour, right? So you come to school, take those four classes, you're in within one semester and you're out. You're going to be working for a residential company. Um, also, residential techs, if you're going to take that next certificate, right, with an associate, if you want it, um, they're not coming in as installers anymore. These guys can now troubleshoot. They can take apart compressors. They can go in there and work on the machines. These guys are making anywhere from $25 to $30 an hour start. Uh, then you get into the commercial side. Our commercial side, we see guys getting picked up anywhere from $25 to $30 an hour. Uh, our control guys are getting picked up straight out of school by Siemens, um, Sunbelt Controls, Johns, uh, Johnson Controls. We're seeing them get picked up anywhere from $35 to $38 an hour straight out of school. And then they send them usually to another training facility to finish up. And then within three months at their 90 days, they're in the 40s. It's up to you. Saying that, we also have residential contractors that come to our school twice uh, twice a year. So every semester we have a job fair. Uh, Wednesday, we have a job fair, which is tomorrow for our residential contractors. Thursday, we're gonna have the commercial industrial contractors 
as well as the unions. So we have union shops. We do have a Southern California uh, student union chapter and they get to test in, if they finish our program, they get to test in as a second year uh, apprentice. And now they're coming in at $31 an hour within three years, they are making well into that six figures. So. So what I hear, money can be made here. <laughs> and it sounds like I heard, I heard a lot, it just certificate. Um, and I'm assuming the degree is just gonna add on to that. And for the students that don't know, within a community college, you can get your certificate with the core courses. And then when you get your degree, you're just adding on the, those general education courses, um, if you didn't know. So it sounds like just the certificate itself, you, there's money to be made. <laughs> I can add on. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you're a, you're a student or a person that wants to make two, three, $400,000 a year and more, look at project management degrees. You start running $1 million jobs, $5 million jobs, $10 million jobs. Okay, this is all possible starting from here. Get your get your feet wet, get your hands wet, and, and then start getting taking business courses. Project manage, managers make a ton of money depending on the size of a job. Oh, thank you. Uh, so next question. What are some of the things students have done after graduating? An example, what kind of careers have they gone into? Dr. Alvarado or Amy? So I guess I'll start. Um, they'll become industrial maintenance technicians or uh, industrial electrical technicians. Some of them go the apprenticeship route where um, they journey out in their career choice of um, the mechanical or the electrical side. Um, they have other opportunities to like, like others are saying to move into management also with, with that type of pro, with that type of certifications. So I'm new to the college, so I don't have a lot of graduated students yet. Um, I have a couple of drafting students who've gotten jobs as drafters for construction companies um, and they love it. They're having a great time. They get to sit in an air conditioned office and work on the computer all day. Um, I have a couple of students who got a, uh, you know, they took the manufacturing course. They didn't finish the certificate. Um, they haven't been with me long enough to finish the certificate, but they went, they took that and they went and got a job as a technician um, at a company called uh, GMS. So there's a, there's a couple of students who've gone and done that stuff, but um in the surveying program we have a couple of we have a surveying program i didn't mention that i keep forgetting about it um we have a couple of students who graduate who finished their ecc and they've gone on to uh take the lset so they could go be surveyors and do some stuff there um but yeah we have that that's kind of where i've seen students mostly drafting mostly our students going to drafting Okay, so you know it's interesting, and in in my classes, um, a lot of the students are in the industry, working as in, in the industry. So there's a lot of talking uh, between the students. Hey, come work for us. This is where I work, and it stirs up a lot of excitement. Um, in my automation uh, class, I currently have three females. Uh, last semester, I had two females. Uh, one of them works at Amazon already. Another one just got a job in the automation industry. Uh, so the females are are in there and they're getting jobs and they're making a, uh, equal pay. Hopefully making equal pay uh, with the other male technicians. Um, so it, it's, there, it's really, there's a ton of, uh, as was mentioned before, companies, uh, just do a search on the five, 50 top electrical contractors, uh, do a Google search on that, and you can come up with 50 top electrical contractor that will cover all the areas that we're talking about. And 
if you're ready to send out send out 50 resumes, there you go. So it, it's just it's wide open. You know, the baby boomers we're we're leaving, and there's a big gap. And if you guys and if we don't fill it within, then we're just gonna well, it's just asking for uh, for foreigners to come in and take your job. So be competitive. A fear. Okay, so where I see my students go, uh, it depends. I have a lot of younger students. Uh, I do have a lot of high school students. Uh, so Rubidoux High School and Patriot High School, Freedom High School, they send their students to us. Um, what I've done is I created a ride along Friday, which every student has to get at least one time throughout the semester, go out with a different contractor, and you get to get your feet wet. You get to see what they do, right? They even sometimes go to park stores um, and sit there for the day. You never know where you want to go until you get there, right? You don't want to come to school for, for a whole year and then go out into the field and say, oh, man, this is not for me. So we try to get their feet wet pretty on, pretty early on. Uh, they do go into the residential. We have a lot of students, once again, the younger students that want to stay close to home. Uh, the older students, older, uh, I would say 21 up, usually want to go the commercial route. They want to get into a truck and start driving. They want to go to LA, San Francisco, uh, Arizona, San Diego, wherever it is that the job site is, because they understand as soon as they pass that 25 mile range, now they're on drive time. And so now they're getting paid. They don't care how, how far it is, they're getting paid. So they get their overtime and they get the trucks, they get to take them home. Uh, they pay their insurance, they pay their gas cards. Um, I have a couple students that now own their own companies uh, right before i sat down for for this meeting i just sold a job for one of my former students uh and it is a um uh, it is a 480 unit complex wow. he's set just from this job he's gonna have to get an entire crew just for this job um wow. And, and that's what we do. I mean, myself, all the other instructors, we're all out in the field. Um, we just don't have enough time. There's not enough personnel that are out there that can manage the workload that is available to us. And so we need students, uh, not just to go out and work. We need you guys to come back and teach. We are hurting for instructors as well. So once you get out there and you get your, your knowledge base and your time in the field. If you want to come home and take a big pay cut, like Steve was saying, um, it is available to you. Uh, I used to get picked up with helicopters and took me out, you know, on oil rigs. I wouldn't know where I was going until I was halfway to wherever coordinates they gave me. And I got my tool bag and jump in a helicopter, right? It's, it's you never know. Military bases, you never know where you're going. So it's, it's definitely fun. Uh, you just got to keep an open mind and figure out where it is that you want to go. Absolutely. And with that, we, I just want to be mindful of everyone's time. Um, the next session doesn't start until 655 and we do have one more question. And one of those, it, well, that question is what kind of resources are available to students? And like Tyler asked in the chat, are there employer employment resources available to your students? as they inch closer to their degree or certificate in your programs, could you use more? Um, and we'll try to wrap it up <laughs> with this last question. And if um, any of the attendees have any additional questions, drop it in, let us know, and we'll be sure to provide that when the information shared. I will go ahead and I'll answer this question for uh, Chafee Intech Center and then the college as a whole. So. Our resources, we have plenty. Um, our students, as I said before, we have some students who take our program under earning credit and some who do not earn college credit. For those programs that don't, we still have a way to make sure that you have all the college resources available to you. So in addition to tutoring, uh, in addition to 
um, our food pantry, mental health services, we have immigration services, we have attorneys available for immigration services. Um, we have um, college rap, so we have counselors available, we have our uh, health clinic available, we have admissions there to walk you through processes, we have counselors, we have success coaches. Um, and many of these are dedicated just to our programs at Intech Center where we can connect you to them. Um, as far as employment resources, so we have a job developer who works out of Intech, so she'll help students, uh, whether they're on the Chafee College campus on any program, but also works specifically with Intech. We also have um, Pedro who works on job placement. So when you are completing a program at the Intech Center, so one of our four month or maybe you're doing uh, part-time uh, eight-month program. Um, and honestly, I didn't even mention our welding. So we've got a welding program available at Intech as well. Um, and by the way, all these programs are free. Uh, we have job placement. So, so Pedro works with you. Um, he comes into your class in the beginning, throughout the training. We help you build your resume. We make sure you have access to um, to uh, companies that we work with on job placement as well. So we have all these different feelers out there. We go through the county, uh, you name it. If there's a resource out there that we can use to help you get a job, we do that. Uh, on top of having a team at Intech that goes out and talks to all of our employers on a regular basis and works with them on apprenticeships. So we really um, are multifaceted on the employment side. And that's really a huge piece of what we do. Um, in our programs at the Intech Center, we look at employment first and employment last. We really sandwich it in between. Uh, as one of our uh, deans say, nobody goes to college for fun. You go to college to get a career. Um, our goal is not to get you a job, but really, I think all of our, as you've heard everybody talk, it's really to create a career path for you and one that only moves you up. Steven, Steven, sorry. <laughs> yeah, MSJC has a lot of uh, similar programs. We have the CARES program, we have EOPS, we have financial aid. We also have uh, career placement through, well, we recently reorganized, and I don't know the new acronym, but it used to be CTE. Now I think it's BTE. Um, as of like a month ago, all the acronyms changed, and I'm still getting used to that. Um, yeah, so those are kind of the resources we have. I'm not super up on all of them, um, but I can, if anybody's interested, I can connect you with people who are. It's my first year. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> and we are at 6.54. Um, so I don't know if you each want to divide it 30 seconds between Gil and um, Kafir. <laughs> I'll take five seconds. My, okay. my person in the chat room, just call me. And I'm the job developer at Norco. So I'm here. I'm the employment <laughs> service. I'm pretty sure every single college in Southern California has all the resources that all the students are going to need. Um, in the question in the chat, it said, could we use more? Listen, at the end of the day, we can always use more. There's my email. <laughs> um, we do have, we work with lots of contractors. Uh, I know Gil works with the contractors. Steve works with the contractors. Shafty, they work with the contractors. We all do. We want to make sure that every single student, when you are done with our programs, you have a career, not just a job. It's just depend where you want to take it. We are there to support you 100%. And we've all been there. Mm -hmm. Speak from experience. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much um, for all of you for being here today. Thank you for the questions that were submitted. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, thank you, panelists. I'm giving you a round of applause on behalf of all the attendees here. Um, please join our next industry session by entering Feed Loop and entering the next industry session of your interest. Uh, thank you so much for being here. This concludes session one. Hopefully you're not late for the other ones. <laughs>
Do you want to stay for round two? <laughs> but now I, I try to leave the meeting. I'm sorry? I'm trying to leave the meeting now. Yes. So you you can stay to hear it all again, or um, you can enter another industry session. Uh, thank you for your round. When does the next session start? I already started six fifty-five. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it looks like we have a lot of our same attendees that stayed. No. Um, we could, if there's any questions, feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand, and to unmute yourself um, or put it in the chat. We had a lot of unknowns. If one of you unknowns this is the first time entering, let us know. Or if you were already part of our session one, let us know too. You can put it in the chat. And drop. Eric's, I think you are on twice and the other one's still trying to connect to audio, but I believe you were part of our first session. Are there any questions that you have? Feel free to drop it in the chat. I think that was everyone. We did it. Um. Recording so that we can capture this. Um, so is anybody willing to give Eric some additional information? Eric is currently majoring in cybersecurity and is actually interested in becoming a lineman in the electrical field. Gil, is that you over there with Norco? Yeah, uh, not as a lineman. So there are some great lineman schools. I always tell the students, uh, we got to start chewing tobacco and start riding bulls. Um, uh, Northwest, uh, they're all in central, northern California. 
Uh, but I do believe the uh, local IBEW has a lineman uh, school uh, here in Riverside. Uh, so you can talk, contact the IBEW in, um, in Riverside for that. Uh, Lyman, I want to know if you have looked into it, have looked into the schools. Um, I actually, just two Sundays ago, I was going to go down and get a, a Norco's Best Hamburger, and right across the street was a Lyman opening up a, um, a transformer. So I had to run over there and talk to him, and he had an apprentice with him that just signed up. Uh, he had just finished lineman school, um, and he was now working as a uh, grunt, making probably $40 an hour. Uh, they make a lot of money. They work hard. Uh, you're going to work uh, when it's when it when it's big storm comes in. That's when you're going to go out and and and, and work. Uh, the linemen that I do know, uh, they make a lot of money, uh, hundred thousand and up. And uh, there's a lineman that's trying to retire, but they keep giving him more mo more money and more money because uh, there are very few good linemen out there. So uh, along with school and along with uh, becoming what you wanna become, you also wanna be the best, uh, top 20%. First one there, last one to leave. Um, a lot of it has to do with attitude. Uh, the Carpenters Union in Ontario, they have 10 skills they want and they will hire you off the street. And none of them have to do with education or skills. It has to do with attitude and they have it a real big plaque. 10 things and a lot of it, show up for work, be ready to learn, be eager to learn. Um, it's all of the, and basically you can, you can be whatever you wanna be. So Gil, Eric uh, followed up. Um, Eric has looked into the school, uh, into a school in Riverside. Would attending classes at Norco give them experience in that field? Well, any one of our schools is going to give you the electrical and electronic training that you need. Um, hopefully, you're good in algebra. Um, I mean, even mastering in physics is going to get you uh, into that mindset that you need to become a, a great um technician or uh troubleshooter and troubleshooters are are, are the ones that that work the less and, and make the same amount of, amount of money so uh again it depends on what you bring to the table uh are you starting from scratch have you ever played with a wire have you ever touched a wire uh, then any one of our schools um we'll we'll give you that hands-on um touchy-feely kind of thing and see if you like it and by one of these schools is this um the inland empire electrical training center uh no actually, actually i'm talking about chafee has an electrician program that's certified uh norco college has a uh a electrician program that's certified by california so uh i know uh san Bernardino valley college as an electrician program. So I'm not talking about electronics, I'm an electrician programs. And um, just whatever, whatever's closer to your, uh, to where you live. And we're all certified by the state of California to, uh, uh, so that that will apply to your uh, uh, educational field. Okay. Kapir, Stephen, do you have anything to add? I know nothing about this. I've heard the song and that's about it. <laughs> Most of our electrical that we have is one theory, two, it's got to do with air conditioning. So, I mean, you do get, you know, the single phase, the three phase. Um, <clears throat> at school, we don't mess with anything past the three phase uh, 220, right? But I mean, out in the field, I was on a, a three phase 460 this this morning in a pet box. Uh, okay. That's not something we learned at school. That's on the job training years on, you know, different generators and stuff like that. Um, well, once again, 
I think Norco would be a better fit than Riverside City College for that. They do have an actual electrical program, but that's just to get your feet wet into what you want to do. And uh, Norco and Chafee College, we have the we have three phase trainers um, that 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 will show you how to work with three phase on the low end, which is the 208 end, 208 volts, not the 480 volts. Any other questions, Eric? Where are, what college are you at currently? that you're majoring in cybersecurity? At Chafee and Wrench. Okay. Irene or Laura, would you be able to provide any? Sorry, I just jumped back on. I heard Chafee. <laughs> yeah, so we have Eric here who is at Chafee, uh, currently majoring in cybersecurity and interested in becoming a lineman in the electrical field. Mm -hmm. They have looked into classes in Riverside mm -hmm. um, and asked would attending classes at Norco or I know a guild mentioned Chafee uh, give, give them experience in the field? Um. Well, first of all, congrats on being in the cybersecurity program. We have a extremely advanced cybersecurity program. So kudos. As a matter of fact, Bill Gates was on our campus and um, got a demo from our cybersecurity Tuesday. So great program to be in. But it sounds like it may not be what you're looking for. Um, we have industrial electrical technology on campus. We don't go into that high voltage lineman work. So uh, we don't have those resources there but on the electrical side. Um, that I would definitely have to defer to another community college or, or an outside area. Um, if you choose to stay in cyber though, if that's something you're interested in, we do have job placement for that. Uh, and we are moving our cyber program to a pre-apprenticeship apprenticeship model. So um, what that means, Eric, is that a pre-apprenticeship would be like yourself right now, kind of coming right into the field. And then uh, once you finish your first year, you would move perhaps into the second year of apprenticeship. So uh, it'll be where you would work You'd go to school, but also work at the same time. And we, it's, it's like a triangulation with your employer, with us, Chafee, and your classroom work. And as you, as you work and as you learn and all hands-on work and you're hitting competencies, your income goes up at your job. So we work hand in hand in those programs. And then you get a, um, the goal for the cybersecurity is you'll, you'll have a Department of Apprenticeship Standards certification that goes along with. Uh, all that you know. How would you get started into that program? Uh, let's see. How to start the program? The spring of 2024. So we're designing that program right now. Um, what I can do is I can send you my information. We also have some internship work going on with um, the cybersecurity program. So that's something we can talk to. Have you ever talked, I'm sure you've had David Nimri as your faculty. Uh, you can connect with David or myself and we can talk about getting you some type of internship work as well or seeing what's available out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my information on here. Uh, oh, sorry, hit send. Let's see, I'm gonna give you my email and then I'll give you my work number as well.
There you go. Yeah, we really have, um, and Eric, I don't know if, if you may not know this, but on in our cybersecurity program, um, we really have a unique take to it. <clears throat> the students work, and this is actually what uh, Bill, uh, Bill Gates actually said he was very impressed with the way that we run our cybersecurity because basically imagine a class built into, into four teams and uh, one has to hack into the server of the other and then the others gives critique and it's it's a very collaborative work on one's trying to keep somebody out and the other one's trying to get in um, and and with that the the student leaves doing what they call a gap assessment so when you go work for companies and you're already walking in with this idea to understand the security side the hacking side the gap assessment side um, it, it stands out and they're trying to get, uh, I think it's NSA, National Security Administration certification as well. So the person who oversees our cybersecurity, he does cybersecurity for the military. And so um, he's bringing in a lot of different connections and learning at a whole different level. So just so you know, yeah, we, we have a pretty outstanding cybersecurity program. But if you want linemen, we could also try to help you figure out what the next step is for that too. Eric, I shared a hyperlink just directly to you. That's to our electrician program, um, but feel free, my screen, there's my number, my direct line, my cell phone, um, and my email. Um, I'll keep my arm up a little bit <laughs> so you can take a picture if you'd like. I can always connect you either to Gil, um, who is our faculty in that discipline, um, or even um, some contacts that we could ha we have at the union. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Eric? It, was any of it helpful? Would you like to know more information on something else? I think we have a returning unknown too. Um, if you came in within the waiting room, that means you probably heard our first session. Are there any questions that you have um, that you'd like to hear more about from our colleges or their programs? If not, I'm going to let another unknown enter our room. <laughs> ah, it's Jane. <laughs> oh, wait, it's just your camera. There you go. There you go. Now you're. Now your audio is connected. Programs run. Some of our programs run 32 hours a week, so it's pretty accelerated, fast paced. So it's important that you are there at every class session um, for the theory and the lab. Uh, Steven? I would say. Um passion and interest something that like fi find something that you actually care about and do that so find something that you think about in the back of your mind um I find that for me working with my hands it's like it was saying is very rewarding and I would actually think about my projects that I want to put together on my off time so find something that kind of scratches that itch and you know you'll be surprised if you do that you can find you can find a career that you can make money in just you know actually care about what you do. Um, this is Gil Vela, Norco College, and whatever college you choose from, whatever program you choose from, uh, college is a place to make connections, to start relationship, lifelong relationships in areas uh, of, the, the, of your interest. You know, you're gonna get together with people that you're gonna be in the same class that have the same interests as you, 
and you start establishing a connection. And as you grow and as everybody disperses into the work field, uh, a lot of those connections are kept. So you're you're building your, your network. Um, build your network, build your certificates, take your courses, get experience, do all of the above, put it all on LinkedIn, and uh, just just open up the world because um, uh, there's advantages everywhere. And you can follow different. You can talk. You know, two years later, uh, people just end up everywhere in the world. Uh, you might be in France uh, working for uh, Eaton uh, Electrical. Germany working on uh, they have fabulous well, all of our a lot of our manufacturing comes from Germany so you can be working in Germany you can be working in in Japan um, South America you know the world has common interest as far as solar uh, energy efficiency um, uh, uh, electricity generation uh, the whole world needs our skills so you're in a good place in the United States to really build those relationship and take it anywhere you want to go. Think outside the box. And, and I'll, I'll just keep going a little bit on what all the panelists have said before. Um, so everything they said, including soft skills. Uh, one of the things that all our advisory committees come down to is soft skills. Do you have the ability to talk to others? Do you have the ability to write emails? Do you have the ability to communicate? And then can you sell yourself, right? At the end of the day, you're gonna be in front of a customer or in front of your boss, in front of your peers. What sets you apart, right? Who are you? Why are you here, right? You wanna make sure that you have those skills that you can talk to people, right? Uh, we wanna get off on the right foot and stay there throughout our entire career. Saying that, you always want to look and see, am I happy where I'm at? Is it challenging? Is it rewarding? Right? Money isn't everything at the end of the day. If you make plenty of money, but you hate your job, you're not going to be there for long. So make sure that you enjoy what you do. And then you won't see it as a job. The money will just be the icing on the cake. So it's up to you. Up to you where you want to take this soft skills. Thank you so much for that question. Um, yes, any other questions for our panelists here today or for myself? <laughs> I know um, I was, I shared that I'm one of our last questions from session one was any resources to our students and being part of our career at our career education programs at any of our colleges. Um, there, there is one of me or one of me coming soon um, at your respective college. I'm the, at Narco, I'm known as an employment placement coordinator, um, but as in the region and everywhere else um, and some other colleges, you're, you'll probably know them as a job developer. And that's what I'm here for. I'm the bridge uh, for our students and our employers and even, um, you know, even connecting with our faculty sometimes. And I know I connect with Gil and I always go to Gil with questions um, and sharing like, hey Gil, I have this employer looking for these types of students. Can you share it with your class? I also help our students with their resume, with their cover letter, help them with some of, I just had a student today follow up after a post interview and we, we did a prep interview, but a post interview, some some things came out during that interview. He didn't get the job. Um, so I'm here to help you pre and post interview and try to refine those um, those answers that, that you give um, if you take note of those questions. It's always helpful to take note of what kind of questions they ask you. So I'm also a resource. Um, you can ask me, you can ask our panelists. Any other questions? I did get a direct message. Do you help students that aren't going to Norco? Uh, sadly, no. <laughs> um, I, I, I only serve our Norco College students, but like I shared, there is one of me, um, I believe, um, there is one of me at, a, at, at the other colleges. 
um, I can definitely share um, some additional contact information if you'd like. Or um, is there a specific college? Chafee. At Chafee, we have Jackie Rivera as our job developer. Um, so you're welcome to get a hold of me and I can connect you directly to Jackie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name in there before because unknown might have missed it. There you go. Any other questions? And now we're just back to Eric, it's just you. Okay. Of course. No, and thank you. You you brought some great, great mm -hmm. questions. I get, we, we see the, this interest, we see the spark and let us know how we can continue serving you and in your career trajectory, your educational journey. And then keep an eye out later this week too, if you want to see the recordings or any resources of our other industries too.